Thanks for joining us on this edition of Intermats Conference Report. Today we are with our MAC correspondent, Courtney Woods. Thanks for joining us, Courtney. Hi, thank you for having me. All right, so you, you may have read Courtney's recent article on Jesse Della Vecchia of Ryder. Um, I know on my end, I saw a lot of good feedback. Um, and I think that was a, a great subject that kind of gets overlooked in wrestling. You know, wrestling is such a physical, mentally, physically tough sport that, you know, you're talking about breaking opponents. You're talking about, um, you know, kind of beating them down. And, you know, it, it's a very tough sport where it's hard to go and say to a coach, you know, there, there's something bothering me. So, you know, I think that's something that's very important for people to see, you know, what was the reaction that you received maybe behind the scenes? Yeah, so I had a lot of uh, wrestlers in college reach out to me, as well as other coaches, just from other smaller universities saying how impactful it was for them, just knowing that it's okay to be open and to talk about mental health. I feel like a lot of people, it's, it's a scary and taboo topic because, you know, guys don't experience it, but they do. And I think especially on a level like Jesse, it was really important for him to be so open about it. Mm -hmm. Going into the interview, that was not my intention for where the interview was going to go. And he opened up and, you know, allowed you know, me to be able to have that vulnerable side and his coaches as well. I mean, they pieced it together perfectly for me and his head coach was amazing. So, and um, but beyond that, um, a couple coaches from his college as well, some strength and conditioning coaches and just people behind the scenes there reached out and said that it meant a lot for them to, to be on the map like that and to, to see that that kind of a story is so important to hear and not to be scared to speak up, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and from my perspective, just reading it, it paints a really good picture of the rider program, coaching staff, you know, everybody associated with, uh, with the team. So kind of on that same note, um, you also had a, a quick kind of blurb about uh, Brent Moore going from Virginia Tech to Clarion. Uh, talk to us a little bit about him. Yeah, so um, I did reach out to him right after he made the announcement about moving to Clarion. And he said that he kind of felt like his journey was similar to Jesse. Um, he was actually at the NCAAs watching his brother who was at Oklahoma and saw Jesse's story and you know saw how impactful it was for him um, but he did leave uh, wrestling in, 20, in February of 2020, and he just said he couldn't handle it. It was a lot of, you know, he was experiencing, experiencing anxiety and depression, and he was gaining weight, and he wasn't happy with himself, so he moved back home, and he worked with his dad for a little bit, um, and they got him back mentally, and he was starting to lose the weight again and, and starting to work out and eat right again. Um, which is exactly kind of a parallel story to Jesse's where, you know, he was eating the same thing every single day just to get his mind and his body right. So for Brent to be open about that too, I think that article really paved the way for people like Brent to see that that story, it's okay. And here they are, you know, a Mac school, you know, D1 being able to talk about something like that is really important. Yeah. And, and he's a guy I've followed on Twitter before. And, you know, I, I saw that he wasn't competing and, then just, uh, you know, the past couple of weeks, maybe months, you could kind of tell that there was a little bit of a, a itch maybe with him getting back on the mat. So, you know, our best wishes to him. Uh, you know, hope, hope he has a great ending like Jesse. I do too. Hopefully another success story for sure. And sticking with the uh, Ohio guys, we had somebody coming back to Ohio from Oklahoma. Yes, yeah, so Tommy Hoskins, um, his coach reached out to me. He is a three-time state uh, champ at Ohio. I know that he had some, some really good wins over West Virginia this year and also Stanford. Um, I did reach out to Lou Rosselli as well. Um, he was active in the lineup this year, so he had a really good run, um, but I'm hoping that he does you know, more so and is able to stand out over at Ohio. Yeah, and, and I remember he was a pretty big recruit coming out of high school. So, you know, maybe back back home, a little familiar, familiarity, and, uh, you know, that, that bodes well for him at Ohio. Um, for sure. And then <clears throat> more transfer news. Uh, Lockhaven gets uh, kind of a tag team deal from uh, Pratt Community College in Kansas. Uh, you know, what do we have with these guys? So they're both JUCO national champions. So Jake Beeson and Michael Spangler. Um, they're both roughly 
like similar weights, 125, 140, 149. So I don't know if uh, Michael moved up at all in weight, but um, they, the college actually reached out to me and said, Hey, like, thanks for posting something like that. You know, we really need that. Um, and it was really good for them to see. I don't know if anybody else saw on Twitter, but they did both write goodbye messages to Pratt Community College. And they were really inspirational, just that, you know, the community college really helped them get to where they are now. So being able to go to Lock Haven is definitely going to be a, a huge thing for them. Yeah. And, and with Missouri moving on, you know, I think Lock Haven could be a team that steps up and maybe takes charge of the conference. You know, they had a rough year because of not really being able to compete last year, but, you know, they're probably going to be one of the contenders. Yeah, I was speaking to Nate Carr uh, last week, and he said that he has a couple more people that he's hoping to get. So hopefully we'll see some more on the way, more transfers there. Yeah, pay attention to Courtney on Twitter <laughs> for that. I'm sure she'll be all over it. Um, well, Mac and, Insider. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mac Insider. Got to get that uh, trending. Um, <laughs> last last transfer to talk about. Yep. Um, one kind of in my backyard, uh, going, I guess, a graduate student from Columbia to George Mason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he is a grad transfer. Um, he's looking to go about 165, and he was a former um, NCAA al alternate. Um, there was some confusion online. Some people were wondering, what is an alternate? Isn't it just a qualifier? Um, but for those that don't know, um, you know, if somebody obviously gets hurt once they make the NCAAs, then that person fills in. So I had a lot of people reach out with questions about that. One little word kind of just confused them. So hopefully that clarifies things. And sorry, I didn't mention his name, Lawrence Kosoy. Um, yes. 165 pounder and uh, you know I, I actually was there at George Mason when he was wrestling in 2019 for uh, Columbia so kind of comes full circle and uh, good to see a guy with that experience end up at George Mason. Absolutely hopefully again another success story out in the MAC. Yeah and, and uh, so some success on a national level that we can talk about U23s uh, there was a finalist from the MAC tell us about him. Yeah, so Sam Mitchell from EUB, my backyard. I'm super excited about that. Um, he placed second, so he did lose both bouts in the final round, um, but he had two really awesome wins in the quarters and in the semis. Um, the first one, he beat Cole Forrester 13 0 and Peter Ming in the semifinals 10 0. Um, so they were both awesome wins for him, and I'm hoping he can bring back, you know, that spunk that UB needs, a little, a little kick to kind of get them on the map as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, Courtney, these are the topics that we, we wanted to hit on today. So um, if anybody is not following the Mac Insider on Twitter or anywhere else, uh, you know, how can they get a hold of you? How can they pay attention to your work? Yeah. So you can follow me on Twitter at Cordy underscore Woods, which is C-O-U-R-T-Y underscore W-O-O-D-S. And that's pretty much where I am. Instagram. Um, and I'm kind of lame, so just follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we will talk to you a little later this month when uh, we have more Mac-related news. But uh, thanks for joining us today, Courtney. No problem. Thank you.